dear brothers and sisters, dear friends. We welcome you today to the first presentation in Evangelism or Witnessing Training Seminar. The missionary department in our conference has designed this training seminar and our conference pastors have made an effort to prepare and to deliver to you five interesting lectures. These five sermons or lectures shall be delivered in five successive Sabbath afternoons from today, April 16, until May 14. They are designed to help you better understand the purpose of evangelism and the most effective ways and means for giving witness to our Lord Jesus Christ and for sharing the present truth. In the first presentation that will be delivered today, Pastor Marian Serbu will address the Great Commission which Christ gave to his disciples just before his ascension. Go therefore and teach all nations. The following Sabbath, April 23, Pastor Etienne Lombard will reflect on the spiritual preparation for witnessing in a sermon entitled, Whom Shall We Send? and who will go for us. This is the text from Isaiah 6, when young Isaiah was given the vision of the glory of God, and then when he was asked the question, who shall go for us, he declared, I am here, I will go. In the third presentation, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come, I will highlight the content of the message that God gives for these our world's history. As you all know, the three angels' messages are the last messages that God sends to this world before the second coming of Christ. So the purpose of that lecture is to familiarize you with the essence of the three angels' messages and how to develop skills and knowledge to convincingly lay out the central truths of these messages. The fourth and the fifth presentations will provide you with practical, practical knowledge and skills, namely with the methods for effective witnessing both through the spoken word and through personal ministry to the people who need our help. In the study entitled Preach the Kingdom, Pastor Dorin Burka will address the topic of effective witnessing through oral communication by our words. And the following Sabbath, May 14, Pastor George Schiopo will provide instruction on how to implement Christ's words, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. These are the words of Christ by which he commissioned his disciples to go to preach the message of the kingdom that is at near at hand and also to do charitable or acts of mercy, healing, uh, casting out demons, cleansing the lepers and so on. We invite you to join us through Zoom and YouTube each Sabbath afternoon at 4 p.m. from this Sabbath until the Sabbath of May 14. Those who use the Zoom platform will be able to ask questions and also to interact with speakers at the end of each presentation. We read in Matthew 10 verses 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Indeed, the kingdom of God is at hand. We see the signs of the times. The trouble is already in the land. We know, and who knows how long, will we have the opportunity to give our witness and to freely share the good news of Christ's second coming and preach the angels' messages. Therefore, take advantage of this evangelism training seminar and say, like young prophet Isaiah, Here am I, send me. May God bless your desire to be his witness. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the wonderful opportunity to be your witnesses. We thank you for revealing yourself to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for giving, us, giving to us the word of testimony, that we may know you and that we can witness what you have done for us, that you forgave our sins, that you empowered us with the Holy Spirit, 
and that you instructed us how to speak the words of truth. We pray that you may bless each speaker who will be presenting precious messages, training thy people for the missionary work to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be with Brother Marian Sirbu today and also with other speakers who will be speaking thy word of truth. Lord, be with the viewers with every sincere soul, that we may know how to speak thy word in the right time, in the right way. May you touch the souls that we will be coming in contact with and create opportunities for us that we may be your witnesses in these last days of earth's history. O Lord, bless the people near and far, heal the sick, and make us free in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, give us thy peace and thy blessing, and forgive us our sins. We pray and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Happy Sabbath to you, everyone. It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to this series of missionary seminars. Today we'll start with the first presentation entitled Our Great Commission. By God's grace, we would like to review what was in the early church when the disciples they received their commission and to go and preach and also to teach all the nations. Uh, and nowadays, many Christians are going to church, but uh, unfortunately, not many of them uh, remember about the commission that was given by the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. So that's why it's good that we, as a church of God, remnant, will review this and understand this is still in, in, in place and we are sent out to reach the people and to do the mission for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that uh, this is in the last days of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, we, we have this episode of his life where he said to the disciples go ye therefore and teach all nations. Text found in Matthew 28 verse 19 and uh, also he is empowering them and giving them the, the message that they may go and teach and uh, instruct all the nations as a result of this will be baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost so we may see in the scripture that not only Matthew was recording these uh, instructions and the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, but all the, the disciples and in all the gospel we may find this message, especially if we look in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So almost the same message and now is more uh, deep to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I assume that all of us we are aware that we live in, in the time when nothing is, uh, is in the place as we used to be before. Uh, calamities, rumors of wars and wars and destruction and all kind of uh, events that are surprising us uh, are around us and in this time uh, we may think about what is the mission of the church for this time. So looking back into the early church, the, the disciples they received the Great Commission and I would like to share with you a short statement from book Acts of Apostles, the Gospel Commission is the great missionary chapter of Christ's kingdom. The disciples were to work earnestly for souls, giving to all the invitation of mercy. They were not to wait for the people to come to them. They were to go to the people with their message. Acts of Apostles, page 28, paragraph 1. So as you see, brethren, here, the Gospel Commission is the great missionary charter of Christ's kingdom. Is the core of our uh, spiritual life and uh, is our high calling to work and to be co-workers with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, some of us we may ask, when was given this commission and why 
and main valve condition. So, by God's grace, we may uh, read a few statements from the Spate of Prophecy. And uh, first of all, I would like to go in Desire of Ages, where we find this wonderful statement, Christ's words on the mountain side, where the announcement that his sacrifice in behalf of men was full and complete. So keep in mind, at this time his, his mission was fulfilled. Uh, his sacrifice in behalf of men was full and complete. Go a little bit farther, the condition of atonement had been fulfilled. The work for which he came to this world had been accomplished. He was on his way to the throne of God to be honored by angels, principalities, and powers. He entered, he had entered upon his uh, mediatorial work. Desire pages, page 819, paragraph 3. So by God's grace, uh, we see that the disciples were at the, the end of public mission of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was uh, after his resurrection, was almost there to depart from among the, the group of disciples, ascending to the throne of the Father. And this was the last message when the Lord Jesus Christ told them what is their mission and great, great commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nation. But this happened at the end of his public mission, when everything was accomplished from his side. Uh, going a little bit farther, we know that the disciples, they were successful in the early church. Let's say a small group of disciples, 12 of them, went and uh, they, they spread the gospel through the world, proclaimed the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, a resurrected Savior, and one that was uh, in, in this time going to the Father's throne and intercede for humanity. So they were successful, but what was the condition? They were together as the Lord asked them to be together by God's grace in one place in the upper room. And uh, they were waiting for the fulfillment of the promises. They received the Holy Spirit, which empowered them to go boldly and speak and share the good news with the people in their era. Uh, now, maybe we'll ask today, uh, is the same with us? Can we do the same, uh, this uh, mission that the Apostle they did in their time? Uh, do we have the same tools or means or help or promises? Were the promises, uh, these promises only for the Apostles? Well, we may find answer here. I found an interesting statement in early writings, uh, inspired book of Ellen G. White, where uh, the statement is starting in this way. Campbell's translation says, This miraculous power shall attend the believers. The gifts were not confined to the apostles, but extended to the believers. Who will have them is another question. Those that believe. So, if we believe that we are called to be the witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, we may have this... this uh, um, miraculous powers and uh, the promises will be for us as well. How long? There is no limitation. The promise runs parallel with the Great Commission to preach the gospel and reaches the last believer. So they are not limited uh, about the time. There is no limitation and uh, they can help us until the end of uh, time when the grace of the Lord will be taken away. Uh, going a little bit farther, <clears throat> to us also the commission is given. You see, brethren, the commission is given to us for this era. We are bidden to go forth as Christ's messenger, to teach, instruct, and persuade men and women, to urge upon their attention the word of life. It's manuscript 24, 1903. And to us also the assurance of Christ's abiding presence is given. Whatever the difficulties with which we may have be content, whatever the trials may we may have to endure, the gracious promises is always ours. Lo, I am with you, always, even unto the end of the world. 
the same book, Manuscript 24, 1903. Brethren, as you, you uh, just heard and we read the statement, the inspired statements, uh, we know that to each one of us this high calling is made. We are called to be the workers with the Lord Jesus Christ. But who special is called? Well, the inspired books are giving us an, an, an you know, idea about this. Called from common walks of life. The common people are to take their place as workers. So it's not necessary that you may be a pastor or a missionary or whatever uh, preparation to have before, which is good, will help you to be more successful or uh, be ready to answer the questions, but also says the common people are to take their place as workers. So we cannot be in the same time in everywhere, but if we work together as a group, then we can be more, more uh, successful. Sharing the sorrows of the, their fellow men as the Savior shared the sorrows of humanity, they will by faith see Him working with them. Uh, when we go and reach the people and you know, get familiar with their problems, uh, we will understand better what is their need. So the disciples, they were not waiting for the people to come to them and ask but they were, uh, they were out, they were looking, and they were looking for any opportunity that they, they may share the, the good news that they had about the risen uh, Savior and the one that received the power and that the one that went to the heavenly place. So, uh, brethren, we should think very serious about our mission and uh, for this time that we are living in, is like never before a great need, a high demand that the people may receive the hope and be instructed and understand what is the plan of salvation. We often sing blessed Redeemer sent from the heart of God. And indeed, this is a reality. We know that this message uh, or this um, wonderful plan of salvation was in the heavenly place uh, he took place, I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ with His Father made this plan of salvation, both of them, and uh, the Father decided that one day He will send out to reach us His beloved Son. As we can see in the scripture, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have or love have everlasting life. Also, this disciple, Apostle John, that he understood the message later on in his epistles is, is presenting in the same way even that he had the understanding, the full understanding of the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ and recognize his, uh, his fulfillment here. Uh, 1 John 4 verse 10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, the disciples, they had the understanding that the Lord Jesus Christ is not going to, uh, to command them to do something that He was not familiar. He was the first missionary. He reached out to humanity. He reconciled us with God through His own life, through His own blood. He reached out and He gave us the message of love. Now the disciples, they had to, to do uh, this work furthermore to continue this uh, wonderful work that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, started on the planet Earth. So we see here in John chapter 20, verse 21, when He is coming among the disciples after His resurrection, and He said, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. It's very clear here that the Lord Jesus Christ wanted them to, to be co-workers, to cooperate, to help the humanity in the same way as He did before. Uh, brethren, 
I, I know very well that the Christianity and many denominations today, they have in mind that uh, this Great Commission is a task, is a responsibility for each one of us. Many churches are proclaiming the gospel and try to evangelize the world and to, to present the, the message of the gospel to all of them. Uh, my concern is uh, not only mine, but many other people are just looking. If the message is clear understood and if they present a clear message from God, because in chapter 28, Gospel according to Matthew, verse 19 says to go to all nations and teach them, but also in Matthew 28 and verse 20 is again repeating this message, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You see, brother, this second phase, to teach them to observe, uh, I'm concerned that not so many of us are aware of this, and uh, this is the, the powerful uh, force of this, of this message. We need to instruct the people to observe of the world things that the Lord uh, left to the disciples and left in the Holy Scripture. So we know that He commanded so many things to them. He told them many uh, parables and many things that they they supposed to know, to understand. And it was like a commandment. But uh, in a special way, in John chapter 15, verse uh, 14, uh, we can see here that the Lord Jesus Christ said to them, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So it was conditional when the Lord says, You are my friends or close friends with me. But we see here that He said, There is a condition. You are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. In John 15, verse 10 also, If ye keep my commandments, Ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. So here, the disciples are supposed to teach the people to observe all those things that the Lord Jesus Christ in a special way instructed them. In that time, when the people of Israel, they had so many traditions, so many other teaching, teachings, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ instructed them and commanded them to, to observe this, and especially he said, we have to uh, observe the Ten Commandments. The most uh, solemn truth entrusted to the mortals have been given uh, us to proclaim to the world. It's a message that we can find in Testimonies all nine. In a special way, the Seventh-day Adventists are called to be witness for the Lord. And you know, at the time that Seventh-day Adventists came or arise, it was not the need to have another denomination, but the Lord in His wonderful mercy, He called the Advent Seventh-day Adventist people to be a spe special uh, uh, group of people that they were proclaim and instruct the people to observe all things. You see, uh, in our beliefs, in our present truth, we have more things that we observe and uh, we would like to, to share this with everyone in this world. So the first, the second, the third uh, angel message, uh, we understand this and uh, we are called and required that we may share these truths with the people. So the proclamation of these truths is to be our work. The world is to be warned and God's people are to be true to the trust committed to them. Brethren, in a special way, we are called to be a witness for the Lord. Why? Because He entrusted us with a great light. We are uh, so blessed that we have understood the, the sanctuary message. We are so blessed that we understood the third angel's message. And this is upon us as an obligation that we may share we may teach the people to observe all these things that we receive from the Lord. So it's a great mission. And uh, according to Revelation 14, verse 6, he says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, 
and kindred and tongue and people. You see, brethren, here we can see parts or if not full, the message or the great commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the disciples. He said, you go with this gospel and preach this and teach the people, instruct them to observe. Here, the message of the uh, angel is that we have to share or to preach this gospel to everyone, every nation. So, it is not an easy task, but the Lord uh, in, empower us to do this. And I, I believe that we are here just to demonstrate the wonderful power of the grace of the Lord. Uh, this chapter 14 says that we are the people that keep the commandments of the Lord and we have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. Brethren, the church entrusted with the message. It is the church that claimed to be the remnant of the, the Lord, of the church of the Lord on planet Earth. And we many times think about that this is our mission, great commission to do. We are now living in the closing scenes of this world's history. Let men tremble with the sense of the responsibilities of knowing the truth. The ends of the world are come. Proper consideration of these things will lead all to make an entire consecration of all that they have and are to their God. Evangelism, page 16, paragraph 2. So, on the other hand, this message that it was given to us is a living force. In a commission to his disciples, Christ not only outlined their work, but gave them their message. And brethren, to be honest with you, I think we should know the message. We, we should understand the message. We should believe that this is the present truth for this time. We should be convinced and then we have the power and not only, but the, the authority and the influence to talk to the other people. Teach the people, said he said, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The disciples were to teach what Christ had taught. And uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ taught them. As a last message or as a review, we can see in Gospel according to Luke chapter 24, starting verse 27. The message was this, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, and all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. You see, brethren, his mission was to be presented, his life, his example for humanity as a redeemer and savior of the world. And uh, verse 45 says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus is behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Ye are witnesses of these things. Brother, you see, he was very clear. He spoke to them and uh, gave them the message. They were aware of what is their message. Repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all the nations. We see later on, Apostle Peter says, Well, when they asked what we shall do, where uh, the, the multitude were gathered and at the sermon of Peter, they were astonished and they were pierced in the heart and said, well, Lord, or sir, what we should do? And he said, well, repent and be converted. So he understood this message and the message was very clear to them. That which he had spoken, not only in person, but through all the prophets and teachers of the Old Testament is here included. And uh, human teachings is shut out. There is no place for tradition, for man's theory and conclusions, or for church legislation. 
No laws ordained by ecclesiastic authority are included in the commission. None of these are Christ's servants to teach. So the Bible and only the Bible, the, the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to preach. And this is the message or our great commission for this time. The law and the prophets with the record of his own words and deeds are the treasure committed to the disciples to be given to the world. Evangelist, page 15. The gospel, or the everlasting gospel that we can see in the Revelation, where the angels is going uh, to, to preach to the nation, all the nation, is to be presented not as a lifeless theory, but as a living force to change the life. Later when the disciples, they say what we had heard or uh, touched or seen, this we preach unto you. God desires that the receivers of His grace should be the witnesses of its power. Brethren, in order to go and uh, fulfill this great commission, we have to be transformed. We have to experience in our life the power of this gospel. The weighty obligation of warning of a world of its coming doom is upon us. From every direction, far and near, calls are coming to us for help. The church, devotedly consecrated to the work, is to carry the message to the world. Come to the gospel feast. The supper is prepared. Come, supposed to be our message. Review and Herald, July 23, 1895. Crowns, immortal crowns, are to be won. The kingdom of heaven is to be gained. A world perishing in sin is to be enlightened. The lost pearl is to be found. The lost sheep is to be brought back in safety to the fold. Brethren, we see here so many direction instruction that is a great need to achieve this, to do this in our life. First of all, uh, we should teach the people that the kingdom of heaven is to be gained. It's given for free, but if we don't grasp this, if we don't take this gift from the Lord, it's not going to be ours. Then a, a world that is, is perishing in sin, in, in sin is to be enlightened. The darkness covers the, the, the nations and the world. We have to, to be the light of the world. We receive this from the Lord. We have to reflect His character in the world. We have to help the people to find the lost pearl. And also in our families, in our close uh, you know, community, we have to uh, emphasize this need that we may uh, brought, bring back the, the lost sheep. Who will join in the search is a question here in the same book, Reagan and Herald. Who will bear the light to those who are wandering in the darkness of error? Brother, do you feel, that, feel the need that is a high demand and is a need that many of us will become workers for the Lord and takes very serious this commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the, uh, His disciples and also is extended up to us. The very life of the church depends upon her faithfulness in fulfilling the Lord's commission. And uh, the neglect of this work is sure to invite spiritual feebleness and decay. Where there is no active labor for others, love wins and faith grows dim. So this statement is in Desire Ages 825. Brethren, if we would like to, to, to be a, a church uh, that is full of life and missionary activities, uh, this commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to us is a very important point in our life. We should uh, consider that this is very, very serious in this time to take uh, upon our, our, our responsibility and uh, may the Lord empower us and make us understand that this is the time that we are living. God expects personal service from everyone to whom he has entrusted a knowledge of the truth of, for this time. Not all can go as missionaries to foreign lands, but all can be 
home missionaries in their families in the neighborhoods. Uh, Testimonies 9, uh, page 30. At this time, we should uh, consider if we fulfill the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. Now is the time for the last warning to be given. There is a special power in the presentation of the truth at the present time, but how long will it continue? Only a little while. If there was ever a crisis, it is now. Evangelist, page 16, paragraph 5. Brethren, you see, uh, for many years, we were talking about the last crisis or the, the crisis that is coming upon the world. Now we should consider that this time that we are living in is almost there. Uh, by God's grace, we would like to, to encourage each one of us that we may be the messenger for the Lord. Now, uh, at this time, all are now deciding their eternal destiny. Men need to be aroused to realize the solemnity of the time, the nearness of the day when human probation shall be ended. Decided efforts should be made to bring the message for this time prominently before the people. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, uh, page 16. Brethren, uh, it's my wish and prayer that we may understand that we are called to a high calling. And our mission, or great commission, supposed to be fulfilled. It's uh, my prayer and wish that all of us will get together. And uh, during these seminars, we'll find the best ways, instruction, how to start, where to start, and what to do for this time. Is a time like never before when we need the revival and regeneration in the church. And uh, this missionary work, it will be like an engine and like a heart of the work of God in the church. Will reanimate our spirits, will give us uh, hope and will help us to fulfill the purpose of God in our life. I wish uh, that all of us will be aware of this and by God's grace, we'll take very serious. It's my wish in prayer. May the Lord bless you.